Hey guys, Luna here with a review and today we have a really special video. I took the task to rank every single album from Radiohead's discography and put it into one video, but the video was too long. So I'm recording this again and I'm just gonna focus on the top five albums, worst two best from one of the best bands of all time. I've had a crush on Radiohead since I'm a little boy. I mean, I remember listening for the first time to Paranoid Android on MTV and being completely amazed by such an amazing piece of music and such a weird and bizarre video. Ever since then, I've heard every single album. And even though this was a really difficult thing to do, I am pretty confident with the placements I have for this. Remember that this is only my personal opinion, so if you have yours and it's different from mine, make sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll make sure to check them out. With that being said, let's go on with number five. Okay, look, I am aware that this is probably the most important Radiohead album ever because it was the turning point from the band being uh, just another rock band to something aiming for much bigger. I think this was the point where, you know, the, the, both the critics and the fans realized that Radiohead wasn't just another rock band. I do believe that and I do believe that the songwriting in this album is incredibly amazing. And in terms of popularity, I believe that this is one of the most popular Radiohead albums ever. But you may say, if you like the songwriting, if you like the concept, if you like the production, and you think that the songs in this album are so good, why is the album at number five? Yes, the album is really good. Yes, I really like every single one of the songs, but still you're talking about Radiohead. After this album was released, the band took a different direction in terms of music. It became more experimental and electronic. So incredibly complex and multi-layered, and it's just so amazing what they did after this album that Really going back to this old alternative rock tunes, it's a bit boring. Once again, I do think this album is interesting and I don't believe this is a bland album, but compared to what the band will do next, I believe this album falls a bit short for me. It's a really melodic album, so I think that if you want to get into the band, this is the album that you should go for first. It's incredibly good, really. I mean, not even comparable to what the band will do in the future, but it's still really good and you should definitely give it a try. Number five. Not only do I think that this album is better than the bands, I think it's way better than the bands. I mean, if you were to put the bands here, a Moonshade Pool will be here. I mean, the album is so much better in every single way. When this album was released, I was a bit scared, honestly, because after The King of Glimpse, I didn't want to hear anything else by Radiohead. I mean, that album was just horrible. The moment I played the album and Burn the Witch started playing, I knew that I had nothing to worry about. This album is amazing. It's beautiful. The incredibly atmospheric production in this album, it's so good and it fits the concept, the lyricism and the performance from Thumb York so well. I do believe that there's a few filler songs in this album. I don't like that much, but I can completely ignore that. The band took a complete shift from what they were trying to do in The King of Flames and thank God they did because the sound they tried out here fits way better with what Radiohead is all about, which is melodic, sad, depressing, and also psychedelic music. Burn the Witch is one of the most accelerating Radiohead songs ever and Daydreaming is one of the most depressing songs of all time but also one of the most beautiful. Present Tense is one of the best storytelling songs that Thumb York has ever delivered and that is quite a statement so yes. One of the best albums of the last decade and I hope that if Radiohead releases another album it's something similar to this because I just love the way that you know Thumb York sounded in this album and I love the concept, I love everything about this album so yeah. Number four. Oh my god. Look, I have my reasons to put this album at number three. I do know that maybe this is one of the most important albums ever released. This album was such a leap forward for Radiohead. I just cannot even begin to tell you. When you compare this album to the bands, you hear that the psychedelic sounds that this album offers are just really good. The really hard guitar riff in the first song of the album, Airbag, it's amazing. The incredibly beautiful ballad, No Surprises. The closing track, The Tour, is one of the most cinematic tracks I have ever heard in my entire life. And that is the thing. 
The cinematic capacities of this album are amazing. Also, this is the album that holds one of the best songs Radiohead has ever released. And before In Rainbows was dropped, I think this was the best Radiohead song ever. Paranoid Android, a track that combines some acoustic guitar with electronic music, with really intense vocal performance by Thumb York, changes tempos. I mean, the music is so complex in this song. I love it. I think it's one of the best songs, not only from Radiohead's discography, but ever. I mean, every single song in this album helps good on their own, but when put together, it's just a complete, a complete masterpiece of an album. I love it, it's one of the best albums of the 90s, and the only reason why I put this album at number three and not at number one, even though I think that if we're talking about influence and, you know, importance in the band's history, it should be number one, but, when talking about music, I don't think that this is Radiohead at their creative peak. I think that there are two albums where Radiohead was more interesting and exotic and, you know, applied the ideas that they were trying to do in this album and pushed them even further. So yeah, I, I mean, I love this album. I think it's amazing. It's almost perfect, but I think there are two albums that do what this album does way better with many different genres. So number three. If I was making this video about four months ago, I think this album would be number one. I cannot even begin to describe how much of a roller coaster of sounds this album is. Think about it like this. Three years after OK Computer, Tom Europe was meant to do another album, write another album, but he realized that he didn't even want to sing in the same way as he used to, not to mention the instrumentals. He wanted to change everything about the sound of the band. Everything on Kid A sound like it was 20 years after OK Computer. This sound mixes electronic sounds with folk music, with ambient music, with rock music, and a bit of jazz music too. If you ask me, I would say that an album that packs so many things together would usually sound like a mess, but that is the thing. This album makes total sense. Everything sounds so good. Everything is so smooth. You start with everything in its right place, which is Thumb Europe repeating the same verse over and over again over an electronic beat. As the time goes by, the song remains the same, but Thumb York singing becomes more and more intense to the point where it almost sounds like it's distorted. It gets louder, more exotic, it's amazing, but then suddenly it all calms down and it goes on to the second track, Kid A, which is a really beautiful beat that could be in a video game. I mean, everything is really beautiful. It's a really weird track, but it's something you need after such an intense track like Everything in Its Right Place. Then after that song is over, you go with National Anthem, which, you know, the instrumental for that song could be in OK Computer perfectly, but then the vocals start to go on and it's this really high pitched uh, echoed voice that goes on to sing something that I don't even understand, but it works. It's weird, but it works. You feel curious about what you're listening to. And after all of that, you get with How To Disappear Completely, which is basically a folk song, one of the most depressing songs I've ever heard. And then after you go through that, you get it with Tree Fingers, which is some ambient music that sounds so beautiful. I mean, this album is that. You're constantly changing the type of music that you're delivering to the audience. And it's so amazing. I love every single second of this album, especially the track Idiotique, which it's an amazing mix. Electronic music and rock music all packed into one amazing song. I love that song a lot. Everything about this album is great. I love it. And if you ask me, I think this is their most experimental album, but that does not mean that it's their best. So yeah, number two, I love this album. Give it a try because it's amazing. Okay, so if we're talking about how important an album is for a band, how interesting the concept is. Maybe OK Computer and Kid A are the ones fit to be at the number one spot. But if we're just talking about the music and the experience of the album, I think that there's no other option to go for when you're talking about Radiohead. In Rainbows is definitely the best Radiohead album ever. This album feels like a band that is not really trying to do anything else. I mean, it seems like in this album they took every single thing that made each and every single one of the albums they have released in the past great 
and packed it into one album. And I don't mean that this album sounds similar to what they did in the past, but it's almost like in this album, they capitalized every single other idea they had in the past. You have electronic music, you have folk music, you have really depressing ballads, for example, videotape, psychedelic rock tunes, for example, in tracks like Weird Fishes, which I believe is the best Radiohead song ever. You have a really distorted bass line in songs like Body Snatchers and the opening track 15 Step mixes a really intense percussion with some really beautiful guitar riffs and everything makes complete sense. House of Cards, Jigsaw Falling Into Play is probably the most intense Radiohead song ever. Weird Fishes, Nude, All I Need, a beautiful song where a really distorted uh, bass line joins Tom York singing and make a perfect mix. I love that song, it's really beautiful. Faust Starp is also an amazing song. I mean, every single thing in here works perfectly. Not only the best album in Radiohead's discography, but one of my favorite albums as well, and one of the best albums of all time for sure. I don't believe that when talking about Radiohead, you can put any other album at the number one spot. So yeah, number one. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you want me to rank your favorite band, then make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll check it out. I really hope to see you guys soon with another video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the videos that I upload. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.